the school shooting in Washington State, two killed, four wounded. A hatchet attack in New York police, uh, police in New York City. Deputies attacked in Northern California, one dead, three wounded. An update, the second one has been killed. Another Ebola victim wanders around New York City, and now they're trying to find out where he's been so they can find if anybody else has been infected. Remains Id identified as Hannah Graham, missing for six weeks in Virginia. And it just keeps going on and on. Ask you a question. We all just came back from the feast last year, week or this week. What did you and what did I bring home from the feast? The above he headlines, excuse me, are just a few from yesterday. News headlines which recently have been come, become more the norm than the exception. Seems like every time you turn on the TV or look at the newspaper, it's just more violence. And it keeps coming in. The one, the, um, the attack, uh, hatchet attack was considered a terrorist attack in New York. <coughs> I'd like to think if, if nothing else, we, have, we should have brought home a lot of food for thought. I'm going to ask us all another question. Do we have our priorities in order? If so, great. If not, what needs to be done in order to put them in the proper order? Following God's way is simply put. We are the ones who make it difficult. Matthew 6.33 tells us, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We being human or physical, we allow other things to take priority in our lives. We let our jobs, our hobbies, and interests, school, sports activities, and those we associate with interfere with our relationship with God. These things can fall under the category of becoming idolatrous, putting a barrier between us and our God, the very God we are supposed to serve and love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. It's Mark 12, verse 30, verse 33. Also see Deuteronomy 6, verses five, 4 and 5. But Deuteronomy 4, 5, 9, speaking of idols, putting things before our God, in the middle of the verse, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Last week we had a sermon by Mr. Stan Hopper going through an, a simplified um, rendition, I guess if you want to call it that, of the Ten Commandments, which we made it very easy for most of us, if not all of us, to understand. We as a people, for the most part, do not like jealousy. How many in here like jealousy? I don't think I'm going to see any hands go up. It hurts. It's painful. The most damaging thing we can put before God is what? Ourselves. Me. Sound far-fetched? Mm -mm. Not so. But at your leisure, in fact, we'll just go ahead and turn over there. Let's read Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19. If you'd turn with me, please. These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven, are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. What have we just seen in the headline yesterday? Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift to running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. And one who sows discord among the brethren.
We are, for the most part, adults, not small children, in our congregation. Though all around the world today, and most in many congregations, a tradition in the Church of God, the ceremony of the blessing of children, will take place. Brethren, this is how and where it should start with us. This is how we keep ourselves focused. But most of the time, after we repent and are baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, we are so excited. How many were excited when they were baptized and received the Holy Spirit? I think I can raise my hand too. We were so excited because now we know it all. We know all the answers and we want to share it with everybody. Right? And they just accept that right away. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. But we want, to, we want to share that with everybody. But we missed the crucial beginning of Matthew 18, 2 through 5. Let's go ahead and turn there, if you would. Then Jesus called... Uh, it's lost my place. Well, let's go to verse 2. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. I truly believe one of the reasons that Jesus used little children as an example here is that it is always children are curious, asking questions, as we should be, seeking knowledge and answers. They seem to follow one answer or the answer to a question with another question. We've all had children, and I think we have all re- can remember those days. Daddy, are we there yet? No. Daddy, Mommy, why is the sky blue? Where did the clouds come from? Is the moon really made out of cheese, for example? Then, as they get older, come the questions that neither parent really relishes answering. Mommy, where do blank, blank, blank come from? And she says, go ask your father. Then we grow up and we have responsibilities. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, I'll just read this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man or a woman, I put away childish things. We are to be working toward perfection or maturity. A better translation there. And of course, we are all in different stages of this maturity. Some are relatively new, while others of us have been around for a number of years. Having and striving to move from those being mentioned, excuse me, mentioned at Hebrews 5.12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you are in need of someone to be teaching you, again, the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have become come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who protects only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. We all, we all, in different stages of this maturity, we have some people that come into church and they're, they are in, in some ways more mature than those of us that have been in church a long time because they have, they have learned from what they've, what they've studied. But as we see the signs of the closing of this age, we need to be diligently seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So as in Ephesians 4, 14. Let's just turn there right quick. That we should no longer be be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things unto him who is in the head, Christ.
from whom the whole body, being joined, knit together, by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. It's the body of Christ. This, is, this way we'll be able to grow in the truth and the knowledge of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ. So how do we get our priorities in order? Brethren, we need to be diligent in prayer. And we all know that. Asking God for strength and endurance. Showing us the direction we need to be taken at all times. Staying our focus straight ahead. Not varying to the right or to the left. But keeping the kingdom of God first and foremost in our mind. To the, the big picture, so to speak. Not just for our own selfish reasons, but remembering and what it says in Romans 8, 22, beginning in 22. For we know that the whole creation, God's whole creation, groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also, who are, have first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption and the redemption of our bodies. Our congregation is, for the most part, getting older. And we feel those aches and the pains of the bodies. And we, we look forward to that day when all those things are shed. We no longer have those. Not just for us, but the whole world. Yes, we will hear rumors and have those who come up preaching another gospel. We are told to beware of them in Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5, and then again in verse 11. I won't turn there right now. Yet, through prayer and continuous Bible study, we can be equipped to know what, when false teachers are trying to steal us away by preaching another gospel that is not of Christ. So let's stay close to one another. That's why we should be here today, as sermon together as God commands us to do. Remember, just as little children, always be ready to ask a question in order to get the right answer. Yes, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to. Have a happy Sabbath.